I used to say, the sun comes up every day, so I have to get up and, and go with it. You never get over it. You never. I don't think you'd ever, you ever get over it. These three women from three different properties look after more than 60,000 hectares of land in outback Queensland. And they do it almost all on their own. Each of their husbands died suddenly. They've all made the choice to stay on and work the land. I used to think it wasn't real. I think it hasn't happened. He'll come walking in that back door. Um, he never came back into that back door. Everybody has a sad story and you can't dwell on it and you can't feel sorry for yourself. Now we must turn it into a positive and we've got to go on and because people depend on us. Anne Ballinger has come to accept having 12,000 hectares basically to herself. I'm my own boss. I um, live in a part of the world that uh, there's a beautiful blue sky. Uh, I'm surrounded by a good environment that's got a lot of animals in it. And um, I think a lot of the world is clamouring to be in that situation that I'm in. I feel very... Um, fortunate to live where I live. Anne's life is at Stockholm Station, a grazing property near the tiny town of Mutterborough, pretty much smack bang in the centre of Queensland. She lives alone and looks after about a thousand head of cattle. We get, we get it in our blood a bit, the culture of this life becomes part of us and if you have that I don't think it's, it's not easy to, to ever change. Anne grew up in the bush and always enjoyed living on the land. When she moved to Mutterborough in the 80s with her husband Bill, she knew they were there to stay. It was the perfect place to raise their children. When we got to this district, it was a lot of young people with a lot of children our, our children's age. It was um, most enjoyable and um, really a great place to live. But just after Christmas in the year 2000, everything changed. He had a couple of bouts of depression during our married life and uh, yeah, and this in uh, the year 2000, he got very sick again. On Boxing Day, the kids and I had gone out mustering because we had sheep work to do. And sadly, Bill had a heart attack and died on Boxing Morning. And so, yeah, it was, um, it changed our lives forever. Anne was widowed at 50. Her three children, all still in their teens. The day of his funeral, we had to be f f flown in to Mutterborough to the funeral and then we had to be flown home or we got flown to Kenner and then flown home again and it was a pretty dr traumatic time and, but all those people were amazing. It, I didn't make any arrangements, someone else made the arrangements of picking me up and taking me there and putting me here and yeah, people are just come out of the woodwork. Anne faced a huge decision. Her backyard was bigger than most, and not everyone thought she could, or should, manage Stockholm on her own. Well, after Bill died, I was very keen to stay. There were some family members that were a little bit iffy, and I said, um, look, I'll give it, we'll give it 12 months. And I don't know, we haven't been back to decide whether the 12 months after 16 years. There have been some steep learning curves along the way. Anne's surprised even herself with what she's learnt to tackle. Obviously, when you live 140 k's from a service centre, it's impossible to get people out at the drop of a hat. So you've, you've got to really be able to do a lot of, quite a lot of stuff. 
She believes the best way to keep going is to keep going. There have been plenty of times when I've been in corners that um, I don't know how I'm going to get out of uh, and I've been fixing something or can't get something going or something and I've thrown spanners up in the air to try and hit Bill but I've never been able to actually quite get him but anyway. <laughs> it's not always easy but Anne wouldn't have it any other way. Some nights I lie in bed and think my god I'm in the middle of Australia almost on my own living here and I think oh well that's life. I never feel like that when I'm busy doing something because that's the other greatest thing about this life. There's always something to do. Penny Button lives 55 kilometres south of Anne's place. She runs a vast 32,000 hectare property, which in a good year can turn out up to 5,000 head of cattle. I get great satisfaction out of achieving things. I love seeing the place being developed and improved and I love seeing lovely stock and I enjoy it. Penny is also a widow. Her husband Ian died of heart failure in 2006. It's no true as saying is you don't know what you've got until you haven't got it. I just realise now the stress in running these properties and yeah, the tough side of things that he shielded me from forever. Tragedies are a funny thing until you experience them, you can't quite comment them or you don't know how to take them. So I guess it's just one of life's, one of life's paths that you have to take and make the best of that you can at the time and you just deal with it the best you can, I guess. Hughes come home to help run the family property with his wife Amanda and their young son Charlie. He knows the hard work that goes into it, something his mum has shouldered on her own for years. I admire her greatly, I admire her for many things. It's all been part of her life and her journey. It hasn't been a very fair one at times, but that's not the, the description of the life or the path she chose. It was just something she encountered, and it's, yeah, I admired her for a lot of things before they even came along. Ian's death wasn't the first time tragedy had struck the buttons. Three years earlier, Penny and Ian lost their eldest son, Rodney. He died in a plane crash. Yes, it's, you, it's indescribable really and um, you, you're in a vacuum for a long time, very difficult to make decisions and things. But, um, yes, Rodney just, I think, was dealt a pretty tough blow. He was helping over to neighbour's place, mustering, and I don't know really what did happen, but uh, nothing can change that, of course, and you just learn somehow to march forward. Just like Anne, Penny had to decide what her next step was going to be. Why did you decide to stay in the bush? Oh, Lydia, there was never any question about it. Why wouldn't I? I wouldn't do it if I didn't enjoy it. I'm certainly not being a martyr by being here. And I'm just as happy when I've got my head down and bum up. Even if it involves mustering hundreds or even thousands of head of cattle, you'll find Penny in the thick of it. No two days are ever the same. We might muster the same paddock many times, but it's never the same muster because of the weather or the category of stock or how many much manpower we've got. To some, the thought of flying again after what happened to her son is unfathomable. It's something Penny has thought about a lot. My father was killed in a car accident, but you just, you don't not drive. It's, yeah, and I did think about it, and I don't think I did have a fly for a while. And it wasn't deliberate, I just didn't do it. And then I think Hugh said to me, Mum, come on, I need to go to town, you better take me in. And it was then I realised that it had been a number of months before I had flown, but. It's just part and parcel of running country out here. It's, it's a great asset on the property. Her driving force has been the legacy her loved ones left behind. 
Rodney was a very positive character and I think of him a lot. You know, one of his great sayings was, every day is a good day, and um, I often think of that. Despite the tragedies that have struck their family, Penny's youngest son, Hugh, can't imagine living anywhere else. I just love the adventure of the country life. I, I love the adventure and the freedom of it and getting out and about in the wide open spaces and every day is so different. And the support network in the bush, it just says so much about the bush, you know, because people stick together through the good times and they celebrate the good times crazily and they, when times get devastating, they all stick together and get amongst it. The community just come together and they, they help you in so many different ways. They cook, they, you know, they come and clean your house. They cut, turn up, you know, a month or two later with a six pack of Forex or, you know, just for a yarn or it's not just in that sad week, it's, you know, a month, a year, ten years later that people are still su supporting you in some sort of way or, um, yeah, reliving memories with you and that's really lovely. The tale of strong women left to make it on their own isn't uncommon in Western Queensland. People say, oh, you're so strong and you're so... But I don't think I am. I think I've just... I've decided this is what I'm staying here to do. And I, I ask myself all the time, what am I doing here? But I guess it's... I just love being here and I have got no great desire to do anything else at this stage. Ros Wood lives at Kundu Station, a 16,000 hectare property about 75 kilometres from the small community of Blackall. For almost a decade now, she's run the mixed grazing station by herself, raising thousands of sheep and caring for hundreds of cattle. I came to the Blackall area in 1980 as a governess. I came for 12 months. I did my teacher's training in New South Wales and I couldn't get a job down there so I came governessing for 12 months and then I was going back to get a job in New South Wales and I stayed, yes. Roz fell in love with a bloke by the name of Colin, along with life in the bush. When we were young there were heaps of young people around so we had a fantastic social time in our younger days and yeah, I guess we've all just matured and grown older together and most of those, a lot of those people are still here. But Ros and Colin's happy life was shattered in 2008. Colin was killed in a motorbike accident on the property. He went down and turned the pump off and he was gone for about oh, 10 minutes, I suppose. And I thought, oh, there's something wrong. He doesn't take that long to turn the pump off. Yeah, and I went down and found him on the road. Mm. What was it like for you? Mm. <laughs> what is the day of my life? <laughs> it was terrible. Mm -hmm. It was just terrible. Colin's hat still hangs on the hook on the wall. His saddle and riding boots remain in the horse shed, just how he left them. I used to say, the sun comes up every day, so I have to get up and, and go with it. Um, you never get over it. You never, I don't think you'd ever, you ever get over it. Ros was left to manage the family's property and raise her three daughters by herself. But in the worst of times, her far-flung friends and neighbours rallied. All my neighbours have been absolutely fantastic. They would come over, ring up, see how I was going, um, come over and help fix things. Um, another neighbour returns my cattle in a truck and just says, oh, I'm bringing over your cattle, Ros. When Ros was diagnosed with lung cancer, just months after Colin died, again, her network of friends came through. Some drove for hours to clean her house, do some gardening, or help care for her children. Others made the 12 hour trip to Brisbane with Roz when she was having treatment. So I, I never did a doctor's visit by myself. I always had friends come with me. The girls were never at home here by themselves. Someone always came to visit or um, called in or, yeah. Years later, with the girls now growing up and moved out, the help has kept coming. When Ingrid was married, we had um, the local builder, the local electrician and the local stock in station agent all rang up and said, Ros, if you need a hand with anything, we're here to help you. Mm -hmm. 
Like both Penny and Anne, Roz found the question of whether to stay or leave was answered by her heart. Roz's circumstances are tragic, but they're not unique. The nearby town of Blackall has just 1,500 people, but accidents have devastated many families. I've got four really close friends who've all um, lost their husbands through tragic accidents. Mm. All live within probably an hour or two hours, hours of me. Mm. Have you ever talked about why you've all chosen to stay? No, we haven't actually. No, But I'm sure they stay for the same reasons that I've stayed. Um, their love of their, their places and the people in the support network they have around them. Some years back, Roz's support network started going on hiking trips. Their adventures have become a yearly highlight. I find you need things to look forward to, whether it be, you know, a party next week or going to Brisbane to see my girls or just some little thing you need something to look forward to. And we've walked through semi-blizzards and rain and but it's just magnificent it's just wonderful and you're with another group other groups of girls and um yeah we really enjoy it we we have a great time yeah thanks lucky i'm gonna go for a bit of value here with uh sunfast number six with a bit of being, with a bit of speed taking out the rouse here with magic jewel should get an uncontested lead and penny and roz had all planned to get together at the long range races but for roz Life got in the way, and a broken pump kept her at home. Penny and Anne still made the most of their day out. We go to a lot of things together because we're in the same situation, and we're on the same page. We talk a lot, and we have a lot of fun together. Um, so we've made a life for ourselves. Yeah, I love the way we've got the little community of Mutterboro and then the bigger centre, that, which is Longridge. We've got a great balance. I've never felt isolated ever. Too much to do. <laughs> Life in the outback is demanding. It's also dangerous. There's machinery, unpredictable animals, and people are far away from medical help when they need it. But the wide open spaces and rural life has a powerful draw, even after tragedy. We have a lot of fun and it's a wonderfully free life. And um, the more you put in, the better it is. And I think we are all, everyone in the bush has to do that. And I think it's, yes, it's a wonderful life. It's the old saying, it's not the events in your life, it's the way you handle them. That's probably the key. Your attitude is everything. Life will never be the same. But, um, yeah, um, a good friend once said, um, um, life is not fair, but it's still good. And I think of that all the time. <laughs>